Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com. And today I want to show you how you can practice guitar without a guitar. Just kidding. And these exercises are great if maybe your hands are getting fatigued and you, uh, you still want to get better at guitar. Maybe you're bored at work and you just want something to do that you're not going to get in trouble for because nobody is going to notice you doing these. They're very discreet and you know, they're going to help you with your finger coordination and your rhythm. So they're great to do all in all. I have three things to show you. I actually developed these while I was at work. You know, I started guitar around the same time that I got this job as a teller at a bank and I would just sit there at the front desk and between taking customers, uh, you know, like when it was slow or whatever, I would do these things throughout the day in front of everybody and nobody ever noticed. You know, obviously I couldn't just bring a guitar and practice at work, but I was determined to get better and this helped me so much. Now, really quick, before I show you these three things, if you're new to the channel, I have a free ebook. It's completely free. You just enter your email address and the ebook gets emailed to you. I'm gonna put a link in the corner and down below in the description and a quick message to my subscribers. I sincerely appreciate your support. If you have not yet subscribed, now's a really good time to, you know, just hit the button, hit the bell icon and like the video, do all that stuff. It really helps support the channel and I really do appreciate it. The first one that I wanna show you is gonna help with your chord hand. And this one's really discreet. You just put your hand down on your desk or even in the palm of your other hand like this, you know, like maybe you're a security guard and you gotta stand up. And I'm doing this like forward just to show you, but you can do it in more of like, a, you know, discreet way. And you just curl your fingers just like you do for the E minor or A minor chord, just like this. And then you practice lifting up just one finger at a time. And it's really easy with your index. But then you try your middle finger. and Maybe it's a little tricky. Then your ring finger. And that's one of the tough ones. You know, the ring finger, it's actually tougher than your pinky. Pinky is pretty easy for me. Maybe it is for you too. Right. But that ring finger, you know, and you just try just going through your fingers. You could even go all in a row like that, just lifting up one finger at a time. If you find that your ring finger doesn't budge, putting your elbow a little bit lower kind of gives you a little bit more leverage. Yeah, you do that with each finger and then maybe you could do two fingers at a time. So your index and your middle at the same time. Then your ring and your pinky. And that's a good way to start your ring finger going because it, it likes to join up with other fingers, I find, you know? And then maybe middle and ring. From what I understand, they actually share a tendon and that's why it's so hard to lift your ring finger. But if you do it with your middle, it should be a little bit easier. And then finally, my favorite, I like to do alternate fingers. So index and ring, and then uh, pinky and middle. Like that. So index, ring, pinky, middle. That's like the final boss of this game. And if you have a desk, like I'm, I'm just going to use my guitar here. You could even like tap your fingers, like tap, 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 and just try to do it with some rhythm. That's a really good one too. Uh, you know, it's going index middle. And the cool thing is when you're actually playing guitar, these are the movements that you're going to make as far as you know, some sort of system, being systematic about it, do each finger individually, then do any combination of two fingers. And that'll help build up that connection to your brain. You know, you're not necessarily playing chord shapes, but you are improving that connection from your hand to your brain and like increasing the control that you have of that hand. And trust me, this is going to make a difference. The next one is what I call shirt strumming. And that's where you just put your hand up to your shirt like this and you practice going down and up. And if you've watched other lessons of mine, you know that I like to say strumming patterns out loud as we practice them, like down, down, up, miss, up, down, up. You know, and that's a huge practice hack. But in this case, you have to say them in your head or else it looks like you're talking to yourself. You know, so let's say you're working on the most common strumming pattern ever. Down, down, up, miss, up, down, up. We're not necessarily playing that pattern because we don't have the strings. We can't miss the strings, but we're going down and up and just rubbing our shirt with constant down and up strokes. And we say down, down, up, miss, up, down, up. So we're saying it in time and we're playing some rhythm on our shirt. And that helps develop, once again, the control, the connection between your brain and your hand. Another thing you can do is work on feeling certain rhythms. When we're strumming, 
sometimes we'll accent certain beats, like beats one and three. So we just go one and two and three and four and. So one and three are a bit bigger. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's kind of like a what would be called a train beat in country music, like chuck 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 one and two and three and four and chuck 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 chuck, and you just do that, just some shirt strumming, or you can emphasize two and four, one two three four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know, and ultimately, you're just practicing strumming, right? Just make sure that if you're sitting at a desk, you don't do it below the desk or it might be a little weird. And if somebody's staring at you or they ask like, why are you rubbing your stomach like that? You can also do this on your desk. It's not the same vertical motion that you make when your guitar is upright, but it does still work for your coordination and it just looks like you're writing. You know, it just looks like you're scribbling down on a piece of paper. Um, either way, this is definitely one of my favorites. You know, even if you're allowed to, like if, if you can be a little bit more active, you could even try drumming out some rhythms with your hands, you know, like. You know, that's something that like, I've gotten thousands of hours of steering wheel drumming in and I think it's helped a lot. You know, I, I can't, like give you like exact statistics, but it does help to just be a rhythmic person. I know it's not playing guitar, but trust me, being rhythmic any way that you can and being a rhythmic person is one of the biggest assets you can have. Straight up, most people need to develop their rhythm. Every once in a while, there's like a magical unicorn of a student who has a great sense of rhythm, even though they've never played any music before. And you know, they learn guitar fast because rhythm is probably one of the biggest obstacles. And if you just have it, your journey's going to be really easy. So why not work on your rhythm any chance you can get so that you can make up for that, you know, and if you're at work, you're driving your car, drumming on your steering wheel, being rhythmic is going to help. Anyways, at this point, we've worked on our chord hand and we worked on our rhythm hand. Now I want to work on our brain and we can do this by memorizing the fretboard while we're at our desk. I recommend first learning how to do this on paper at home. And once you get used to it, you just go through it in your head. Uh, to map out the fretboard, you need to know this one rule. You could write this down on a post-it note on your desk. Uh, you always skip a fret to get to the next note, except from B to C and from E to F. So the musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then when you get to G, you start again at A. So it's like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, over and over again. And you probably know the names of the strings already. So let's, for instance, start on the note A. That's the open A string. If you just play the A string, all right, let me get my guitar to show you this stuff. So we have the A string. And then to go to B, we skip a fret because we always skip a fret, except from B to C. So there's nothing between those two. And then from C, we skip a fret to go to D and so on and so forth. If you want more help with this, I have a six minute video on memorizing the fretboard. I'll put a link to that in the corner and you can see exactly how this is done with like full graphics and everything. Like I said, first I would learn how to do it and do it on paper like this, but eventually you can do it mentally in your head. You just think, okay, where's C on the thickest string? And you just count up to it, you know? And you start at E, then F is one fret higher, then from F to G, that's gonna be a couple frets, you know, and so forth. And you just climb all the way up to C. Just work through it in your head. And doing this mentally is a massive benefit, is that's what you're gonna do when you're in that situation where you're actually playing guitar, you know, and, and somebody's like, yeah, let's jam, and I'm gonna jam in B flat. And you're like, well, how am I gonna find that on the fretboard? You know, and you can just do it on the spot without having to like open up a book and take a look at some chart. Um, alternatively, you could just print off a picture of the fretboard and post it up in your workspace. I have one in my uh, lead guitar ebook, link in the corner for that. Um, you know, if you can get away with it and then you can just kind of study it when you get a chance, like that's a really good thing to do too. Um, either way, those are three things that you can do at work or, you know, at school or at home, wherever you're at that aren't gonna make a big scene but still help you get better at guitar, you know, especially if your wrists and stuff are getting tired, but you still feel like practicing. If you find that you'd like some additional guidance, don't forget I have that free ebook. And I also have some courses designed to help you out no matter where you're at on guitar so that you can reach your goals. I'll put a link to my website down below with all my courses. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.